Oh, interesting. That's a good post, though, eh? Yes, I thought that was really cool. Um, let me just find it here. I'm so tired of that guy. Look at me. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so a lot of people ask me, Shereen, what's my favorite guest to interview on the show? Yeah. Mine is tech companies like yourself. <laughs> right. Okay. Have, Fair. Yeah. My favorite are restaurateurs and chefs. Like, sorry. They're, yeah. They're you know what? I, I get that. I feel like talking to Tim's would be way more interesting than talking to me. So I think. Well, no, no, I don't mean it that way. I'm, I yeah, don't, I'm teasing. I yeah. know, but that's okay. Dominic yeah. would say the same. I, yeah. We already did a show today and you already gave me shit. So <laughs> oh, no, I was just to swear today. I did that last night. And I like, won't swear because when you have potential sponsors like Sapsucker, yeah. Yeah. you can't say those things. So yeah. I'm going to say, but have you had Sapsucker? I, I haven't been to the store since you introduced me to it. And I'm going to be looking for it. I can't yeah. wait to try it. I had to go buy. I know it's true. Maple. Uh, it's maple. maple sap from maple trees. Oh, Why? Because not maple I spilled it on my keyboard yesterday. Another show. Oh. Oh, and no. I had to go buy a keyboard today. <laughs> so. Okay. So you know it's the real thing. My sticky key syndrome was really bad. So anyways, we have a great show. Everyone that's going to be joining us tonight on LinkedIn or Facebook or YouTube. Uh, sorry, not X. We got something wrong with Twitter right now or X, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but we've got a great show lined up. Train your back. Dominic's doing Dominic thing. <laughs> he's becoming a bigger celebrity than anyone. Like he's Is like he? the Ryan. He's like the Ryan Reynolds of Alberta. He's not on some other podcast right now. Is he or some? No, he's podcast. probably shooting a film somewhere. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah he's a, he's a pretty big deal. You should have seen him today. He had this like beautiful gold necklace on. And, oh wow! Uh, yeah, sporting a little you know little peach fuzz. All right. right? Yeah, yeah. Good I see him. him. I see what he's doing. He's you doing. know what he's doing. I know he's doing. He's he's getting. He's becoming like the celebrity of our show. Anyways, we got a great show. We got a I, like this is. I'm not kidding you. I love interviewing chefs and restaurateurs, um, people that own restaurants. I love listening to their stories because I guarantee it. Tim, our guest tonight, has got one heck of a story. I know it. Is there? A, I've never. Here's one thing I've never done. We've done 1,500 shows. I've never interviewed someone that said, "Oh yeah, it was really easy." And no, it was awesome. I make lots of money and I had a restaurant given to me and it was so simple to run and people love working and you're right. I mean, I've never heard that. Oh, and, and those are not the interesting stories we want to hear. We want to yeah. hear about the yeah. struggle and how you overcame it. It's those are the right. fun stories. Yeah. I'm excited to talk, talk to Tim for sure. All right. Well, let's cue the intro and then let's go grab this guy. Yes, let's do it. Here we go. Here we go. Cheers. <laughs> We're streaming like demons and swinging from the ceiling. I got a fist full of fair feast, the killer just can't keep. Oh, we got no class, no taste, no shirt, we shouldn't face. We got lined up, shot down, firing back, straight crown. There you go. Welcome, Tim. Hello, Welcome, hello. Tim. I had to stop doing the, the yeah. air drums there right before I came live here. Love Do you that. know what? I was thinking about the other day. I don't know if you if you ever, if you knew Ryan Smokin, but he was a good friend of mine. We used to do a show, and he used to own Smokes Poutinery, and he passed away last year. He would do air guitar <laughs> all the time on our show. So, I, uh, I always think of that when you say things like that. I was like, man, he would have loved that. He, well, it would have been Kiss, first of all. It would not have been like that. <laughs> awesome. Well, Tim, thank you again for joining us tonight. Shereen, you're back. Dominic, yeah. he's shooting film somewhere. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that. We'll stop it there because uh, I'll get myself into trouble. But Tim, co-founder, managing director, the Barley Merchant Tap Room. Like, it's incredibly awesome. So thank you for joining us. Hey, man, I'm super stoked to be on the show. It's kind of like that, uh, you know, long-time listener, first-time caller sort of scenario. Awesome. 
I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm drooling scrolling through the Instagram right now. And uh, yeah, this is, this looks amazing. Well, let's get into the story, Tim. Yes. Let, okay. Let's. Wait, wait, you said 35. You beat me by one year. <laughs> this means I'm older. That's all. <laughs> okay. okay. So 35 years in the industry. Was it this or being a lawyer? What was it? Uh, you know what? It was this all along. Really? It's like, awesome. it's cheesy as it sounds. It's like, this is what I was born to do. Being a restaurant owner was not in my plans for the better part of those years. Um, but it just kind of like uh, led to that point where it's like, I got to stop working this hard for somebody else and do it for myself. I seem to have uh, learned how to do a few things and uh, yeah. wanted to put those to use. And there was yeah. a void in Langley for... Uh, the type of place that we opened up, you know, a craft focus um, place where you could get all the craft beer on tap. There's several mm. awesome breweries in Langley and we pour them all proudly. But I was like, man, somebody needs to open one of these places that, uh, you know, where you can get some killer food and yeah. have a whole lineup of awesome beers. Man, somebody should do that. And Thank then, you for doing it, Tim. <laughs> in, my, in my backyard. Love it. Yeah. So it was... A Go back to the beginning. You said so thirty-five years. Yeah. So, so you've always known this where did is you start, Tim. Yeah, okay. get us start us. Like, how do we go take us back? Are you that? I was I was the dirty bird. Uh, <laughs> McDonald's. Yeah. Me you're, too. you're the artist. You're yeah. artist. See, uh, I can't hear you. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna interrupt for a second. To all the people that say always knock and go, Well, you'll be working at McDonald's. Look at this. <laughs> like <laughs> seriously. I always say that I know more people that drive very fancy cars that work at, or did work at McDonald's. McDonald's so teaches you a ton, a ton. I yeah. never take that for granted. That was, that was the start for me as well, Tim, but yeah, it's your story, not mine. Yeah. Well, so I, I started at McDonald's literally on my 15th birthday. I made them hire me before I turned 15. Cause that was the rule. And I'm like, I want to work. I want right. to make some money. So I, uh, I remember the first thing I bought with my McDonald's sunglasses was some Oakley razor blades. Uh, no, it hurts. Seriously? That was my first big check. Yeah. Yeah. It's real awesome. high priorities on what I wanted to spend mm -hmm. my money on back then. But Damn, yeah. I was so parallel. Cool. I did it for six like, years. I was at KFC. And oh, I, oh I, that's where you, you started at KFC. I called the Dirty Bird. Sorry. Oh, we have a dirty bird on our menu. That's what threw me for a, for a little. Oh really? Bit. Oh, do you? There's the dirty bird. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is always the best interviews. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, I started too. It's funny you say that. I bought some Oakley razors too. Mm -hmm. uh, that's there you go. Hilarious. And so you started McDonald's. Yep. Started Give us the journey. And then I uh, I worked my way up into management. My grade 12 year, I was like an 18-year-old second assistant manager. Amazing. Um, yeah. And then I stayed until I was 21, worked at a few different locations, had a handful of great mentors, went through their some of their uh, head office training and uh, left. Oh, wow. So I'm like, now that I have all that foundation, I went to yeah. go work at the keg restaurant. Oh. Um, so I went from being a manager at McDonald's and got hired to be a manager at the keg. So I never bartended, never served. And Very different, so, yeah. Yeah, so they put me through a three-month training program. Ironically, the original keg that I worked at is actually, the barley merch is now built in the parking lot of that former location. No way. Wow. Yeah, there's some crazy oh, uh, crazy stories. I proposed to my wife at that keg. I had my, my 19th birthday and my first like legal alcohol at that keg. Oh, and now I have a restaurant there, so it's kind of wild. Oh, that's a, that's a, so. How long were you at the keg for? Did you so keg was two and a half years. Mm. Um, it was the, over in Maple Ridge was kind of where I where I landed, and then uh, I went to a restaurant called Sammy J Peppers. Uh, all now known as Sammy J's. And uh, yeah, I worked with them. I was at their first location. Uh, we ended up growing it to seven locations. I opened up five of them as the GM. Went through multiple restaurant openings. And yeah, so that's where like, I mean, that's lots of years of, uh, of hospitality and the craziness of growing something small that was an in independent startup into something that was like, basically became a chain at its peak. I think there was seven locations. So oh. um, yeah, it was a wild ride. Great, great, uh, great life experience and just kind of perpetuated that, you know, um, kind of like that 
fancy casual. Like we, we took it from chill casual to elevating dishes, creating mm-hmm. a better experience, all type of stuff. It's hospitality, man. You just spend enough time in it. Yeah. It kind of just starts to come naturally. And then yeah. I, I was I was married young. So like I said, I proposed to my wife with that keg that doesn't mm-hmm. exist. So I'm actually, uh, next year will be my 30th wedding anniversary. So I got married oh, really right. young. Well done, dude. First of all, congratulations. Yeah, 30 years. So being married in this industry, <laughs> that is huge, dude. That's huge. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah, well, there was a point uh, in my career where, as I say, I kind of have one of those like, I woke up and realized that I had a wife and two kids at home that I didn't mm-hmm. enough because I was doing the 55, 60 hours a week, working between multiple locations go home, tuck the kids in, open the yeah. laptop and you're right back into the QuickBooks and recipes. Yeah. And so, so I decided to take a step back a little bit and uh, I live right down the street from one of the crown jewels of the Fraser Valley uh, golf course called Redwoods. Oh, okay. And they had an amazing, so it's a, it was seasonal, but I was there year round. So I was the restaurant manager there. We did weddings and tournaments. Um, and so I, I went, that was my first opportunity to do like, catering style or like you know buffet style service but these people are paying like 25 30 grand for their wedding so you know it had to be had to be detail 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 and you know the the boss the the owner the managing director uh amazing mentor of mine doug hawley um he he was he was their first guy through the door in the morning uh you know he, he knew how to jump behind the bar and pour beers he could jump on a mower and mow fairways and he could gussy himself up to lend a hand during weddings so he was a really really great mentor and i spent 11 years there so 11 wow yeah two years so back-to-back jobs with 11 years wow yeah and then we're really close to the barley yeah, so, I'm, I'm, <laughs> so then I'm, 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 i fell in love with craft beer along the way uh 2013 was the big boom here in british columbia yeah. uh, all the breweries were allowed to have uh, tasting rooms and that's when we went from 50 to 100 to 150 to now 240 craft breweries here in bc and uh yeah i made the switch over i i, I dumped out my last can of kokanee and uh switched over to a beer called we angry scotch ale for russell brewing that was the mm. it, it, his claim is the uh the beer that converted me to the other side and i and i never looked back so that's yeah i feel like once you have tried craft beers you how can you go back i don't know jay are you are you a craft beer guy or are you a? am a craft beer guy yeah. and the same thing the other way it just doesn't it just doesn't do it you yeah. know no it's well there's yeah. just the, the flavors and what you get out of the experience yeah. of having craft beer yeah it's just it just there's no other way it's a whole yeah. different level it's a whole yeah. different world yeah. yeah i love that you use the word experience because i like to spell that with the word beer in the middle it's <laughs> Yeah. Experience. Once you've had your experience, <laughs> you realize you were drinking grandpa's yellow fizzy swill because that's what my dad drank and that's what my grandpa drank. And, you know, um, but once you get into the, it's just like, you know, the culinary world was the, you know, the spice rack. You know, yeah. like we've got 34 beers on tap at all times and they, every time that almost all of them wow. rotate. So as soon as one's empty, it's a different beer, a different brewery. Um, really? we're always rotating. Oh yeah. Can you, can you, can you also open a location in North Vancouver? Like I, you're not the first to ask. I would. Yeah. I mean, we're starting to like Langley's the same where the city's really starting to build up and things are changing. And I feel like North Vancouver's the same, but there's still a lot that we're missing that we don't have, but yeah, it's funny. I'm not the first person to ask you that. Hey, <laughs> yeah, no, we, 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 we do draw audience from, uh, pretty far because of our proximity to the highway we get a lot of people where we're the middle ground so somebody yeah. who lives in Abbotsford mm-hmm. will meet right. in Langley just off the highway with their that friends from sense. North Vancouver right right um, or people who work in North Vancouver who do business in the Langley area right make make- coming to the restaurant whenever they're close by but yeah we get that I get the same thing about South Surrey uh, people want to see us there um, Abbotsford I don't know we're just you're bang on you're bang on I, I was just talking to some friends today that were like, let's organize our, our dinner. We do it kind of, you know, every quarter or something like that. And they're in Abbotsford. I'm in North Vancouver. Langley's our, it's our, it's our meeting point. Um, so yeah, no, I'm, this is, I'm going to suggest, I'm going to, I'm going to suggest this for the next one, but 
you know, it's interesting that you said 2013, you know, because I feel like I, you know, I remember 15, 20 years, I don't feel like craft beer was even a thing. And now we have so many amazing options in all, really all over. I'm sure Edmonton and Calgary have probably got some great options as well. Um, so, so Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan does as well. Saskatchewan, I could, yeah. What change was it? Was it the rules? Was it? Like, yeah. So it? craft beer in BC um, goes back to 1982 when uh, Horseshoe Bay Brewing opened. It's a really cool story because uh, essentially the, the Coles notes was there was uh, Carling O'Keefe, Labatt and Molson, and yeah. we kind of all had just this monopoly. And then apparently there was some sort of conversation happening about how much they could all charge for their beers. So there was some price fixing or alleged price fixing. Oh, I see. Okay. And right at this time, uh, you got this guy named John Mitchell who uh, saw an opportunity to open up uh, and make a different kind of beer that BC was about to welcome the world for Expo 86. And all we had was the mm -hmm. yellow lager. So he wanted some traditional English style pub ales and that sort of thing. So he put in an application to open this little cottage brewery in, in uh, Horseshoe Bay. And it was right at the time the government caught wind of this. So they said, you know what? Yeah, you go ahead and open that. So like wow. you know, the craft industry being disruptors, you know, that's, that's kind of how it all started. And, wow. that's how okay. it no uh, and then you had Spinnakers open up in Victoria, uh, 1984. And then there's a, you know, a handful of the OGs that kind of like, did their thing back then uh mm -hmm. and a lot of them are still around uh vancouver island brewing i think was about to have their 40th anniversary so it was around um it just wasn't mainstream and i think that the yeah. beers that were available were probably a lot closer to where the actual breweries were right um, yeah but yeah when when that happened when the tasting room thing it uh really kind of took off and it took this i mean they called it micro brew Right. Nobody yeah. calls it micro brew anymore. Yeah. But it was just that was how they described it. It was just these tiny little brews doing really? something different. And like, what's this one that tastes like cough, bitter coffee? What's this one that tastes right. like pine needles and grapefruit peel? Mm -hmm. This isn't beer. And then now people just can't get enough of it. So that's basically just been the evolution. And here we are, 2024, like I said, about 240 craft breweries is kind of the, the number. Sadly, we are losing a few that struggled through COVID uh, if they're kind of on the tail end, but I'm also there's there's new ones opening up. There's actually one opening up not too far from us in Maple Ridge, really? on a farm called the Patch. So Ooh. yeah, it's like you know, there's an ebb and flow in like every industry, but it, it's pretty competitive out there for them. That's why people say, like, do you make beer? I'm like, no, no, it's okay. a very very challenging industry, and I'm yeah. just grateful to be a you know a place where we give a you know we basically make this dance floor where all these amazing artisans, people who are passionate and talented when it comes to making yeah. this beautiful thing crafting this beautiful thing and we just we put it on tap so that everybody can enjoy it and you know i'm kind of chasing we like to chase numbers so we want to put every single craft brewery in bc on tap at some point and uh we're having our third anniversary next mm -hmm. week and we're sitting at 155 different craft breweries from around the province that we've already had on tap wow and we're <laughs> Two orders uh, away from eighteen hundred different beers that we've had on tap. Eighteen hundred wow. different beers. Yeah. yeah, there's an archive on our website, and I actually had to break it up into like alphabet segments <laughs> for one page. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Tim, how much influence you got on the menu? Like when it comes to the food, are you mm -hmm. are deep in that as well? Or well, I do get to taste everything before it hits, but you know okay. what? So, I mean, I came into this as the guy who absolutely loves craft beer mm. and ciders. Like, that's just a real quick show. Yeah. We, we're not just about beer. We have eight ciders on tap. All of our spirits are BC. We are BC exclusive behind the bar. Okay. So picture this. Okay. So this there's a beautiful restaurant in this image behind me. But when we took it over, um, it was November of 2020. So COVID. COVID, deep in COVID. Deep in COVID, <laughs> It was an empty shell, so it had been a restaurant before, but it was completely gutted. All we, that we had was the washrooms were intact. Um, the dining room was a big rectangle, and the kitchen had white tiles on the wall uh, and the, the tile floor, and that was basically it. So all mm -hmm. the stainless had been removed. 
all the kitchen equipment was gone. So we kind of had this beautiful blank palette for us to, to kind of work with. Anyways, so it's November. It's cold. There's no heat. There's one light bulb hanging from the middle of this. Shut like, up. Give no me way. And I'm, I'm placing an ad because we finally got the keys to the front door. There's all this threat, like all the uh, casinos and anything catering related was still, everybody was out, unemployed at the oh, time. Right. They were closed. So when I placed an ad that for a, for a chef, uh, for a new restaurant opening, I don't, I think I was one of very, very few that was, uh, that was an option at the time. Right. Because so I was, I must've had 70 unbelievable resumes. So I'm like, okay, okay. I'm going to whittle it down to 12. I'll set up interviews. I'm going to do three interviews, you know, each day for the next four. Uh, mm -hmm. On the first day, the second interview came in. And uh, so again, he walks in fully dressed in a suit into this dirty room. I got like hoodies on and everything. <laughs> I've got like this pop-up uh, card table with like my folding lawn chairs Heaters, like, this is perfect. This is and, awesome. and he comes in and we sit down and we start talking. And uh, so this is my now chef, uh, Ron Pereira. Um, wow. He had been working for um, the Earl's Restaurant Group in their culinary development kitchen, where his full time job was invent dishes that might go on the menu at Earl's. So he'd work on dishes all week long. They would go oh, wow. uh, and review on Thursday, I guess, or Friday, and it would hit the menu for the weekend. And uh, so his knowledge of flavors, cooking techniques, uh, his passion for food, his passion for being an educator, everything just came out while I was talking to him. He was a home brewer. Um, he went to school to be a went to school to be an engineer and actually got a job in the industry and decided that he loved food. And you know how important it is to be mm. uh, handy at a restaurant. So I, I literally, I, the guy, the next person showed up for the interview and I'm like, yeah, yeah, you just wait over there. <laughs> and as soon as I, I got up from, like, I felt like I could have talked to him for hours, literally. Mm -hmm. We just hit it off right away. So I walked outside and I called my business partner and I'm like, like I just, I, I just interviewed the guy. It's the guy. And he's like, well, hold on. How many interviews? You got to keep doing your interviews. So next couple of days, no, nobody even held accountable to him. There was, there, there was. Actually, I shouldn't say that. There was a couple of good candidates. Mm. Instead of just hiring him right away, we actually did like a, not so much a black box competition, but I knew somebody who had a restaurant that was closed on Mondays. Oh. We whittled it down to three because we wanted to like, you know, give him an opportunity to shine. Like yeah. resume was great. Great personal connection. Loved his philosophies, his passion. Um, but there was two other, uh, two other people that were definitely worth considering. So um, we went to the, the restaurant that was closed on the Monday and the chef that owned it was like, I get to eat the food. I'm like, yeah, yeah, come on in, join us. So we gave them all 50 bucks and said, I want an appy. I want a handheld and I want a, and, I want a nice. and so here's this guy. He's like, I'm sure he's thinking like, I got this in the bag. It's what he does all week long. The other people, you know, they were from the hospitality and the restaurant or the culinary <laughs> side, but different, uh, different types of backgrounds. So we made him go first, 10 a.m. in the morning. He comes in. He's got all his mise en place all set out. Um, and the first thing he does is he comes to the table with a bottle of beer and says, if I'm going to serve you food, I want you to understand how well it fares with these amazing BC craft beers. I'm like, you oh, you're just like, whoa. Yeah. Wow. So we had some beers. We tried his food. Uh, everybody else went after him. Again, the, the food was all great, but it was just this personal connection that I knew in my gut. And that was like my credo through all of this was trust your gut. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if like I, I had to. So we hired him and he was employee one and we didn't end up opening until July 23rd of 2021. So he was with us for seven months, went through menu development, went to the golf course that was closed down, mm -hmm. used their kitchen to do our, you know, our development because we didn't have the second location to go to or anything. Right. So, right. yeah. So, uh, the question was, do I have any influence on food? I let this guy go. And he has a culinary team of people that he encourages to, you know, to put ideas mm -hmm. forward and um, you know, have a little section on the menu that we call test kitchen feature, a little homage to what he did before. So everything has to kind of like prove itself, um, both from guest satisfaction as well as execution um, from, from the culinary side. So, yeah, so we put some things on there. 
Um, you know, we're running some sal wild BC salmon dishes right now. Um, you know, we do some things that are seasonal, some things that are core. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So uh, I don't have to have influence other than like, I'll be like, I feel like a salmon today. Do you have mm -hmm. salmon? He's like, I can do salmon. What kind of salmon? Like, I want like salmon on it. And, and like, he loves taking an idea and running with it, but he's got lots of his own. And I give him full freedom just to be creative because yeah. that's what you're supposed to do in this industry is like, mm -hmm. you know, bring people in that are way smarter than you. Yes. Let them do what they do. Let them do what they do. Yeah, you don't need to micromanage people like that at all. No, 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 not in not our industry. No, 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 no. Um, yeah. You know, it's interesting also, Tim, it's funny. And I was thinking about this while you're talking. I think I've seen like a million menus because I can actually now de really de by reading the menu, I can actually get the feel of what kind of chef you have. Yeah. And you can tell by the ingredients chosen yeah. and selected and then the descriptions and then how they're paired up, how they're prepared. You can go, this guy loves what he does. Yeah. And you can tell that. You really can tell that. Like, it's pretty crazy. I've seen menus. I'm working on one right now. And uh, looking at it, and you can tell when people throw it on there for no rhyme or reason. But I guarantee it, you ask them any dish that you have on your menu, there's a reason why. And there's a story behind each dish. And yeah. you can tell. Seriously, you can tell. And and if it's, it is pairing with, with a beer or pairing it with, uh, you know, a different drink or whatever the case is, you can actually tell. So yeah. that's awesome. And I love, I love owners that let their chefs go crazy because that's what you hired them for and, 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 and inspire them and to push them further. That's a coach as a, I'm teaching coaching now yeah. is that that's a coach yeah. and we all need a coach. And I think um, the more that chefs are that they have that freedom, let's say, or should be that way is they, they do amazing things for us and they're incredible and, and they're passionate and that's the best chefs to have. And you can see it within the menu. You really can. I'm not just saying that I've seen thousands of menus oh, yeah. in my career. Beautiful menu. Well done. Thanks. And it's, and it's, and it's not like fancy, fancy, but it makes sense. That's what I like about it. Mm -hmm. It makes sense for what you have. And sometimes the menus do not complement the operation or the, or the brand, or, you know, they kind of miss Mark or, People yeah. get excited about two dishes and then the rest are just thrown on there because we have to have a pasta, you know, like those kind of yeah. things. There's rhyme and reason here. I can see and uh, incredible. Well, spreading, it out, spreading the, having enough different things on the menu that um, mm -hmm. are executed in different parts of the kitchen. Yeah. So that you're not just like, you know, we call it midline where the, where the burgers are made, right? Mm -hmm. Man, if your whole menu was just burgers. That'd be a really, really, challenging station like we already have three people in that area during our peak of our friday saturday nights but there'll be 11 to 12 people on our cooking line but it's all spread out through you know someone who's building tacos someone right. who's facing the the range with you know like five six pans going on you got char broiler doing grilled chicken or you got uh, you know the steak entree um and then we've got a our flatbreads are really popular they're basically pizzas <laughs> um, but they're they're our flatbreads and yeah, so it's all spread yeah. around the plane, right? So and you can see a lot of influence from the, the community. I'm sure you buy some local products as well. Yeah, are you right? looking? Are you looking that. on Instagram, Jay? Is that how you're? No, no, oh, I just, you're... I've read thousands of menus. <laughs> Trust me, I've read a lot of menus in my life, and you can just, I, you know, what you do like the thing is, is though is that you can see someone that puts heart into a menu. And oh, yeah. I've been reading menus for years. Yeah. And you can see someone that goes, you know what, I need to do this. Yeah. And you can see this within the way that it's laid out. You can add in, you know, there's some some highlights within the description, some of the words. Mm -hmm. You can see the local influence. You can see the uh, diversity, ethnic confusion. You yeah. see all these different things. It's beautifully done. And I say that with what brand you have, like you're not a fine dining and you're not a greasy spoon and yeah. that's okay. You're perfect for what this is. This is a perfect yeah. menu for your operation. Well done. Yeah. yeah. We use the word like a, like kind of like an upper scale gastro pub. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. And, yeah. and when you look at the dishes on the plate, like everything looks fantastic, but we, you know, it's not, it's all approachable. Um, the, the, the credo yeah. that we referenced whenever ideas uh, were presented 
um, was same, same, but different. And okay. we said that because we wanted people to see the menu and see items that kind of look familiar. Like there's no beef, yep. flip, there's no clubhouse sandwich, you know, there's no chicken strips, but you know, there's other things that are on the menu. Yeah. It's like, Oh, this is like our take on that. We don't have a Caesar salad. We have a Roman salad. Right. And yes. so, and, and, I love it. and it's vegan, just yeah. randomly vegan or vegetarian and vegan. If you don't put the parm on it, but like the dressings are like, there's a lot of things that Chef has done. You'll see right at the top of the menu there where it says gluten-free menu, dairy-free menu, vegan menu. Oh, I see that, yeah. Um, so we kind of set out uh, to be as inclusive as we po- as we possibly could be. Everybody talks about target demographic. Yeah. What's your target demographic? I'm like, well, I want everybody who eats food and drinks liquid beverages. <laughs> to- How do you do what you can to try to, you know, like, Obviously, we, you know, we support the craft beer industry. You know, we're a burger place that also has awesome entrees, but you could also just come and have a bunch of tapas at the table and right. share with your friends and sip and talk about different beers on your flight. Or you can lean into some whiskeys, whatever it is. But the idea is, is to create multiple different types of experiences. Right. You know, we've got a patio, we've got booths, we've got like the party room, we've got 25 seats at the wood. So again, it's all... Who can we cater to? How many different types of uh, you know audience? Mm. And when you put barley in your name, the people in the gluten-free community are probably not thinking that you're a safe destination for them. No, so that's, that's true. where those menus started. So we mm. instead of putting GF beside things on the menu, because we make everything from scratch in house, we know what all the ingredients are in every single dish. Yeah, Our flyers are 100% gluten uh, free of gluten because we use this amazing flour called the good flour that's made with rice and tapioca starch Serious. so you can have a fried chicken sandwich on a gluten-free bun with french fries that are topped with crispy frizzled onions and it's all gluten-free and you can have a bc craft beer on tap from great box brewing canada's number one uh craft distillery that is celiac certified in oh Canada. wow so yeah, I was going to say, is it certified? Because I, I know I know some celiacs and they, they won't go near it unless it's certified. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I heard it's hard. Yeah. Like, like it's, 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 you don't throw those certifications around too easy. Yeah. Well, so, no, yeah. because it's an allergy. Like it's, it's yeah. going to be severe for some people. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We actually, we hosted a dinner for the BC Celiac Association. Was, everybody was terrified. Serious? Yeah. So we had a dinner for 40. At the barley merchant. Yep. And uh, so we, you know, I can love it. Like, hey, why do things that are easy? No, don't you know? You know, stand out different. It was good, actually. You know, we went around. It was still kind of busy at the time. We we flushed out the orders to the other tables. Like, hey, we're just going to be doing a meal for these, you know, all these people from the the community. You know, we're just going to quickly, you know, if you're going to order something, do it now. And then we had like a blackout for ten minutes. You know. Cut, you know, everybody was like gloved up, washed hands, cutting boards changed, all the all the you know different smooth whatever. Like we we set it up as in a safe possible as safe a possible way, and we executed that. I'm like, man, if we can do party of forty, then let's just lean into this. So we don't just say, you know, this is the gluten free item that you get to choose. It's like this is these are the modifiers you need to tell your server. I do put the onus on the customers because then my service don't have to remember. Right. That's good. Like I'm gluten, you know, I, I'm gluten intolerant or I have celiac. Then they. Mm-hmm. So I'm supposed to order it, you know, on a gluten-free bun, sub this without this, and then they get their dish. Mm. It's going to hit. It's going to hit. So we're like, what other dairy-free, you know, vegan, obviously, that's a big one too. So yeah, probably our smallest menu would be our vegan one, but I think it's still 10 or 11 things that people could choose from. It's, it's pretty, it's really it's good. It's pretty good. I know, I know. It's really, it's really good. Yeah, that's really good. I think one or two people would be like, oh, that's great. But to have that many options, yeah, from a vegan perspective. Um, Tim, I'd love to hear about, so I love going to, um, you know, just local eateries and discovering new craft beers. I'm, I, For me, it's always, you know, if I'm if I'm at the, the liquor store, I'm always grabbing um, either, so Talisman's one of my strange fellows is also yeah. one of my favorites. And so I'm, that's, I'm, that's just my go-to. Um, sometimes we drive up to Squamish for a frame cause it's actually hard to find yeah. anywhere else. Um, so if, you know, if you're, if you're at your, at, at, at the barley merchant, is it like, could you, could you like, how, how well do the servers know the craft beers? Could I say, Hey, I'm, I, I always drink talisman. What can you recommend? And are they just like, 
they do they know can they can they can they kind of teach me about new beers that i might not otherwise know about um absolutely in- so um what i my expectation with them they, they know a lot about styles okay. so maybe if they don't know what a talisman is and you're like well, like and they say oh you've had that talisman before um, what type of drink is it? like? It's like a hazy pale ale. Like, oh, right. we have four great hazy pale ales. Okay, on top. perfect. Yeah. So that when they come on ship, we have a little dry erase board on the back. We're like, here's the five beers that changed yesterday, uh, and then check to see if there's any. Oh, there's two already from today that are onto something new. So they'll be like, okay, well, they just grab their little tasting glass and they just go have a little bit from each one. They, you know, and they know how to create their own tasting notes. You know, like not everybody loves all styles of beer, right. mm-hmm. but you know, if you can say, describe a half a bite to me or like, what's a good yeah. beer you're on right now? Or like, I'm just looking for an IPA that's not hazy. Right. Get able to figure out, um, a, so, you know, if not, and sometimes it's one beer and sometimes like, let me make you a whole flight. Okay. Tim, do you get, do you get any requests in on non-alcohol? We do actually, we carry a handful. We don't do any on tap because there's, well, one, I wouldn't, I don't want to waste a tap for something that like, it, I, I do move quite a bit. So yeah, I do that. Um, it's a, yeah. quality control, as I understand it, when you keg non-alcoholic uh, on the, like in the lines, yeah. they, they don't have certain things. I don't know the science behind it, but right. it's a conversation about that. But I'd rather just grab a nice fresh can from the fridge and crack yeah. it. So you talked about a uh, strange fellow. We have an amazing, uh, they have a pale ale called uh, Nevertheless. Um, oh, really? I'm just, oh yeah, it's a no, non-alcoholic. I'm just on their website right now. I, yeah. is it, is it? Is it it's fantastic. Yeah. My, my buddy, uh, Jonathan was there today and, and he gave up booze a while back and he loves our variety. So we have, we have that. Uh, we have uh, two beers from um, mm-hmm. Phillips as a uh, line called Iota. Okay. So a, a, a blackberry lemon sour, and we have a Pilsner, and then we also have you know we carry kombuchas uh, from a local company called Culture Craft Kombucha. I we, love culture. Uh, and we also have um, alcohol-free cocktails in a can. Cool. Um, okay. Cool. Called Alo. So yes, and we do mocktails. So okay. yeah. yeah, we, uh, we I, do have those. I love do you it. do you drink kombucha, Jay? Are you uh do I? I I do. I do. I um I culture, do. I, culture I, makes I, a cream I ran, soda. I ran, I, ran, I ran clubs for a long so time. Good. So good. I gave up yeah. drinking a while ago or I would have been done. Um yeah. but I was like, yeah, I yeah, we don't go. I'm gonna, there I'm gonna mail you I'm gonna mail you some culture cream soda. Sure. Yeah. It literally it. tastes like the old pick a pop. It does. I don't know if you're no, so I'm not joking. And it's and it's kombucha. Like yeah. it's serious. Yeah. Pick a pop. Oh my God. Yeah. It, remember pick a pop. Because remember you it used to. Was... It's even better with a shot of vodka. <laughs> oh, I have not tried that. That is <laughs> so weekend. All it's, right. That's I, like I say. It's like it doesn't have those flavors of uh, that a lot of times you associate with. Yeah. With kombucha, yeah. where it's kind of like yeah. that funky vinegar sort of flavor. Well, they lean into it. It's, it's like, yeah. And their whole line is like that. I, I don't know. Yeah. It's a culture. There's some magicians over at culture because what they can yeah. produce with their kombucha, you wouldn't really necessarily know you're drinking kombucha. Yeah. So Dan Larson, one of the, the founder of Culture Craft, was one of my line cooks at Sammy J. Peppers in Metrotown. Sure. So when I, when I heard that he owned the company, I'm like, we're getting your stuff in because everything that we do behind me here is like, it's all about the stories of the people behind it. And I just love that him and I had that. Uh, that That's connection. incredible. Yeah. Wow. So Tim, um, you also, yeah. Tim, on your site here is a lot of things you have going on. So one of the things here, it shows back in June of this year, you did a culinary exchange. Yeah. Like, like you, like you just keep re- reinventing this to be better. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, dude? What's this about? Yeah, so uh, this lovely lady named Chloe uh, from Australia. I guess they have, there's a like a, a BC trades or skills BC um, okay, yeah. program, and they do an exchange with uh, someone from Australia every year. Um, they've had like roofers and different like, plumbers or whatever each year. This year, it just happened to be a chef. My, I have a friend that owns a local printing company. Uh, she came to the restaurant, brought her friend for dinner to show her the barley merchant. 
just so happens he was a guy that works for Skills BC. And he heard about our culinary program. The place that they were going to be staying was in this Fort Langley, which is about, you know, eight minute drive from our restaurant. And he's mm -hmm. like, would you be down to have this lady work at your restaurant for a couple of weeks? So she came here for four weeks. Uh, she, she flew in. Um, she wow. spent some time at the culinary uh, VCC, I think, in Vancouver and like got some other uh, opportunities. But we had her for two weeks. So we outfitted her in Barley Merchant gear, put her in the kitchen. First week she prepped, and then the second week she was cooking the line. Wow, we could we'd have a better world if we all did this. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. That's awesome. Too. Was, like, yeah, we even we sponsored a hole at the Langley Chamber of Commerce golf tournament where we were out there raising some money for a local charity and uh, serving up some tacos. And we're like, you should come. Yeah, like I know this probably wasn't what you know you signed up for for like this. You know, she's a third year culinary apprentice. But hey, you know what? Special events are all part of that. So we yeah. uh, we brought her out to the golf course. She served tacos, and we we're just out Tell there me. on the elevated tee box, and yeah, it was amazing. So Tim, oh, Tim, God. what's uh, what what what's next? What's next? What's your <laughs> you you're well, brewing something? North, North Vancouver location for the barley market. Yeah. Yeah. What's next? No conversations on the uh, on anything on anything new. We're not we're not looking, but it's not like something that we're like we're never doing that. But yeah, it's no. definitely like everything that we do every day prepares us for when that happens. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Um, everything's getting systemized, documented. Then you have a system like you're, you have mm. an orientation package, and it's great yeah. until you're like, well, there's three or four things that aren't in there, and then you revamp right. it and make it way yeah. better than it was and you add new pictures and instead of stock photos there are people that actually worked at the restaurant and you know like so even though we're three years old we're still green and growing um we used to say or my, my chef Ferran always used to say um uh and we're just getting started and we're just whenever yeah. i gave him praise whenever i'd say like man holy like what a crazy night busiest friday night we've ever had he's like yep and we're just getting started so at the beginning of this year we're two and a half right. years old i'm like can you I think we need to actually step back and acknowledge some of the amazing things that we have accomplished and how far we've come from that insanity of opening up after hyping the restaurant for a year because we were delayed for a year opening. And I'm a social media nerd. Like I, I run my own website. I do all my own social media. I was like a influencer for craft beer for a stretch as the craft beer tourist before the restaurant even opened. So, you know what, telling the story, being on not a podcast like this, yeah, this, this is my jam. I, I can, I, I like to tell the story. So anyway, so I, I said to him, we need to come up with something else. So the new model is wait until you see what, you, wait, what we do next. And okay. so this year, I I, we did our first uh, chef's table experience where the, the every single thing that we served was all made just for that night. Uh, we sold it out mm -hmm. to people. Uh, and there was, and then uh, on the cocktail side, uh, my mixologist Josh uh, developed a whole bunch of drinks that were that he did just for that night that were paired with the dishes that they created. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, we do an event called Craft and Canapes that's part of the Langley Craft Beer Week, where we bring the whole culinary team out into the dining room and we set up uh, chef stations and we sell the whole restaurant out 185 people. And we throw a party, live music, and people just walk around and try all the different food. Sure. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> we're just, we're, we're, we're oh, happy. Man. You, you want to know what's next? Uh, nobody knows this because it just happened today. I ordered six ounce wine glasses. So we, we do beer flights. We do cider flights. We do whiskey flights. But nice. you know, we only have eight nice. wines all together. But we always get asked. Can we get wine flights? I'm like, no, no, no. Like we, you know, we right. don't have to buy the bottle. Everything we do is on draft. But hey, you know what? Some people want to try four wines. Mm -hmm. So I just brought in some. I just got in two weeks time. We'll probably kick that off. So it's an option. It's there. I can see that because the ladies that I would want to go go visit, they're gonna they're gonna want wine flights. I just know it. I'm the only one that drinks beer in the group. So they're gonna they're definitely. So that yeah. makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and so it would be BC. I guess you did. Yeah, yep. so we're limited because all of our wine comes in kegs and pours from the draft tower. Um, mm -hmm. We are limited uh, on the okay. options where the wineries, you know, aren't or where they also put it in in kegs. Um, right. okay. There was a lot more options before, but the company that was local here in the Lower Mainland uh, that 
put the liquid into the kegs no longer exists. So if there's someone's close mm-hmm. to them, they want it, they have to either have their own setup or they have to ship it up to the Okanagan, get it kegged, and then bring it back and then sell it to me. Which, right. So it's limited. And there, the wine yield in BC was down, I guess, because of the fires and the cold snaps mm-hmm. and stuff. So, right. Uh, yeah, that's what it's, yeah. Well, Tim, I, I first of all, I want to thank you for joining us on our show. I like I, Shireen, that's what I'm saying. Like, people that run restaurants, chefs. No, you're right. Favorite guests. Favorite you guys tell stories so good. And, yeah. And the, the other thing, Tim, I know it, it wasn't easy. Like, you opened a restaurant during the pandemic, dude. Like, yeah. it doesn't get harder than that. Like, yeah. And I, hats yeah. off. Like, seriously, hats off. Great menu. Amazing. Yeah business in our industry and and thank you for making it cool and thank for making it places that people want to work at and yeah. honestly i just can't thank you enough and and i love it like, i get goosebumps i got goosebumps and yeah. it's been a while since i've had a restaurant owner on my show for a few weeks and it's my favorite like it makes my it makes my week and i love hearing it because it inspires others and we need more people like you to inspire others to do these things and you know, Thanks, you do it during COVID, you don't get more gutsy than that. And yeah, well, we were in it. Uh, you were in it. You just had to see it through. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we actually lucked out. Um, quick note on the COVID thing because we were we spent eight months negotiating a lease, and the day that we d- finally decided, like, okay, this is it. We we all the things are done. It's all in there. The lawyers says it's all good. We took delivery of that lease. Uh, three days before Dr. Bonnie uh, Henry. Shut the, up. All, it was, yeah, it was March wow. uh, 15th. So she shut everything down on the 16th uh, yep. of March because it was the day before St. Patty's Day. And uh, so here we are with this lease. My business partner was on his way back uh, from visiting Thailand. And uh, so we were just going to get together on the Wednesday. And when everything shut down on the Monday, we, we didn't touch it. So five weeks went by. We get a phone call. Hey, uh, just checking up. We never got that signed copy of the lease. And we're like, yeah, restaurants are closed. and We're not. Yeah. So we managed um, to you... convince them to go back to the negotiating table and uh, got a couple safety nets in there in the event of uh, public health orders that should help us survive. But again, like so there's talk about silver linings, trust in your gut, all these things. Like there were so many curveballs that were thrown at us during COVID. And I just stopped, adopted the mindset that like, if it's shitty now and you can't see why that happened, then just wait because eventually you'll be like, you know what? This actually worked out, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, I, I always say this and I said this today on a different meeting is that you really in this, sorry for the analogy, but you're close to the ocean, but you really determine a good captain or a good leader when they can navigate through choppy water. It's not when it's all perfect and mm-hmm. calm. That's not when you know that you're a true leader or a true developer of a business. Yeah. It's when you, you can navigate it through those tough waters. Yeah. And it wasn't tougher than that, man. It hasn't gone tougher than that. Yeah. That's the Cadillac. Kind of so hats yeah. off. It's a wild yeah. ride. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Unbelievable. Army. We have almost a hundred staff and like Look at that. nothing we can do wow. is it yeah. happens without the whole friggin' team. Like towing the line every single day, man. There's a lot yeah. of, a lot of moving parts at the old, Barley Merchant here in Walnut Grove. Wow. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Tim, thank for joining you, Tim. us. Yep. And everyone, please check it out if you do. Or I, I will when I'm in the Vancouver area. Hey, if, you, if I find out you came to Vancouver and you don't make your way up the dude, I'm I've, got a, I've got a few stops over there. Um, <laughs> but definitely amazing stuff. And thanks so much, Tim, for reaching out and being on the show. And it, it means a lot. Really you inspire so, so many others across oh, our country favorite. and in the States, too. So all the best. All right. Thank you, Tim. And Shereen, make sure you hit me up when you when you come out. I run my own social, so shoot me a message on. Uh, I will. I hundred percent. I will shoot you a message. Um, I'm I'm going because this is this is like beer and burgers. That's my. That's it. That's my jam. So I am I am there. It's awesome. Pleasure well, to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Bye. There you go, Shereen. Wow. Yeah, that ain't that cool? Best. Dude, can I can ever. I co-host all the restaurant <laughs> chefs? Me and Tom to get the other ones. No, um, I'm, I'm uh, yeah, that you know what, you're right. Like, they, they're storytelling, that's what it is. The storytelling, so much, there, um, there's yeah. a DNA, and, and, and there is a yeah. If I like, we've interviewed, I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of chefs, yeah, and, and owners and restaurant owners, and 
the, and people in our industry, there's a DNA and I don't know what it is. Yeah. I think it's, it's a little bit of craziness, a little bit yeah. of leadership, a little bit of inspiring, a little bit of drive, resilience, all these things in one recipe to create people that are just incredible. And, and I get goosebumps because I'm honored to be able to talk to them and remember the days when I was running restaurants. Louis. And then, uh, um, it just, it's just, it's not easy. No. Right. The, I need to make it sound like it's easy. It ain't easy. And, it's, and, and I don't know, like we lost a lot of places that I loved during COVID. Uh, I just would just, you know, every time it was, a, you know, I'd see, I'd drive by and it was closed and I'd go, ah, like, you know, it, it was, it was, I don't know how so many of them were able to get through that. That was a, no, I, I uh, had so many moments where you had to like, honestly got choked up yeah. a lot of the times because you would see people and I don't know if a lot of people know what's behind a lot of these businesses, but there's, no, they don't. there's homes that they've, you know, they yeah. may have a mortgage to get That's the right. business. They've it's got other partners. Yeah. There's a lease. There's an ownership. There's, you know, there, there's all these things people don't see yeah. because they're having an amazing experience or see this beautiful restaurant. Yeah. Trust me, there's a lot of work that goes into those. And to have people like Tim in our industry, like I, I just wish we could have like that everywhere because we need more of them. And, and our industry yeah. is getting tougher and tougher. And, you know, bad media gets out there and tells us how hard it is. Or my fair, I, I was so mad during COVID because I was like, could you stop getting in front of a closure of a restaurant with a mic and say, we lost another one. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Quit it. you're not making people want to do this. Right. So we need oh, more I people like Tim. Right. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. Awesome time. Thank you again for joining. And Dominic, you missed a goodie. You missed, and, a, good uh, one, yeah. you missed a good one. And yeah. I'm going to enjoy my sap sucker and listen to this later, but, uh, awesome. all right. Thank all you, right. Jay. There you go. Another okay. one done. Yeah. Yay.